That clip is proof that New Zealanders are the best rollerbladers in the world. Find me a better clip of a grind. I'll wait. What up? It's Brandon here. Welcome back to Blader News, your number one rollerblading news source. Once again, brought to you by Skids Grind Plates. The best way to do grinds outside of skating. There's been a bunch of brand new skates just come out, so we're just going to roll straight into product news. And the first boot we're going to talk about is the most unique boot Razors has ever released, and it's the new All-Star Colt. Now this is just another Razors Colt, but this time the toe is painted white. The reason they're doing this is they want the skate to resemble a Converse. Now on Razors announcement post for the skate, all the comments are about the fact that people are just going to rub this white paint off as soon as they get them. But I think this is really cool. I'm glad to see Razors is doing something unique to their skates instead of just changing colors of parts on the skates. Now I can see this toe chipping off pretty easily, similar to how the painted Aeons do. But they look cool and they look unique, which is the best part. It's a shame it's not a pro boot though. These skates come in an anti-rocker setup on some ground control Featherlight 3 frames with some brand new GC wheels which are 57 millimeters at 92A. The skate is really cool and I hope Razors dives into this more uniqueness more often. The latest USD Team Carbon skate has been popping up in shops all around the world right now. This is a skate we spotted a long time ago now in that Power Slide magazine leak. It, just like all the other Team Carbon skates USD makes, looks like a really nice, plain, safe skate, which I think is dope. I did see people talking about the weird placement of the 45 degree strap, saying it seems like it's too far forward, and now that someone's pointed it out, damn, it does look like it's too far forward. In that position, I feel like it wouldn't do much to get your ankle locked into your skate. But I'm sure it's like that for a reason, right? And then we had Rosie's releasing three new skates, and they weren't aggressive skates, which pissed off a lot of people. <laughs> Instead, we got three new hard boot wreck skates from Rosie's and some crazy new colorways. They're not really new though, because this line is based on a line that they made in 1992. And that's why they're calling this line the 1992. Now I think these skates are so cool. The colorways they come in are purple and green, orange and pink, and navy and black or gray. Every single one of them looks amazing. I do kind of wish they had colored wheels though. I feel like that really would have completed the look. But they look really good regardless. But the amount of people commenting saying they wish they could put sole plates on these is just proof that people want some more color in their options for skates. And I really hope all skate companies capitalize on that. It's gonna be cool to see some crazy colors come out like the domestic punks. This line of skates was definitely made in response to the success of the Impala Lightspeed inline skate, which is based on the original skates that Rosie's made years ago. The Impalas have done a lot of good for rollerblading, bringing new people in to the scene, getting them on skates and knowing what it's like. But the skates they make are cheap. There's nothing wrong with that. There's always room for cheap skates. But to have the option to have a better quality, nicer ride skate that still looks really cool, I think is a really important role that should be in rolling. If people get into skating onto these Rosie skates, they're going to be more likely to stick around because they should be better for skating on. But anyway, this line of skates from Rosie's will be released in July and I really hope I can get my hands on to test how good the quality are and how they match up to the Impalas. So subscribe to catch that if I ever get enough money to buy some. <laughs> And then we have to give a huge congratulations to Bill Stoppard for his signature Adapt GTO skate. I came this close to spending my savings on these skates because of how cool Bill Stoppard made them look ages ago now. Bill has been absolutely destroying the streets of Toronto for years now. He is one of the most unique, coolest rollerbladers we have. And I'm so glad to see him supported by such a cool brand like this. Huge shout out to Adapt for doing this for him. I think it's such a good fit. And a huge congratulations again to Bill. And then away from skates, 5050 released their new 2021 line of backpacks. They come in two colorways. We've got this nice, plain, safe gray color. And then we got this sick orange camo. These bags are designed for rollerblading. So they should have everything you'll ever need. Speaking of 5050, those core frames I talked about in the last episode are now available for pre-order. And they should be shipping in May. Those frames could change the frame industry forever. If you want to know more about that, I'll link to the previous episode in the corner. It's definitely worth checking out. And then Endless Frames teased a new frame they're about to release in a week's time. We don't know anything about this drop yet, but it sounds like it's huge. It's been in the works for a while now. People have been testing them out. They've been tweaking the design and they've already got them back from production. So they'll be set to go by next week. I'm going to put my bets in that it's a new size frame. They can just fit some ridiculous size wheels 
that are absolutely insane. I can't wait to see that. And then if you need that product that absolutely every rollerblader should have flow on them at all times, that skateboarders absolutely hate wax, then Roller Returns has you covered. He posted up this teaser video of this really cool colored wax saying that there's this and more products to come soon. So definitely follow him so you don't miss that. And then our final piece of product news, the one that I am most excited for, my clothing brand Lace just released our March line of clothes. One of my goals with Lace was to try bring some more color into rollerblading and I'm finally trying to do this with this line. We have three new t-shirts, the first one being the pink stealth tee. Now this is a lightweight shirt, perfect for skating on those hot days, embroidered with the word laced in the same color as the shirt, making it only noticeable when the sun's shining on it or when you look close, hence the name stealth tee. And we also got this navy blue and white striped shirt featuring the laced favicon embroidered on the shoulder. The favicon is a pack of laces if you weren't sure. This one has been proven to help you lace more tricks. Maybe it hasn't been proven, but you have to buy it to find out. And finally, we got the mint stealth tee, which is the one I'm wearing right now, which hopefully isn't clashing too hard with the green screen. This one has to be my favorite. It's the same as the pink stealth tee, except it's mint. It's lightweight as well, and it's embroidered in the same color. The shirts are now available in more sizes than they were last time, including some women's cut tees. For the pink stuff tee, I'm trialing doing some women's sizes. If these sell well, then in the future I'll offer a women's cut for every design, or maybe even do some women's only designs. Once again, I'll be packing and shipping all the orders myself from here in my apartment. And to save you guys some shipping costs, when you buy three shirts and use the code free ship, you'll get free worldwide shipping no matter where you are in the world. I'm really proud of this line. I put a lot of work into it, trying to make it as perfect as I possibly could. I think you're gonna really like it. The prices are a New Zealand dollar. Your dollar is most likely stronger, so it's cheaper than it seems. And it would really, really help me out if you copped one. Not only would you be supporting me, but you get a cool shirt to show for it. It's a win-win situation. Once again, I really don't want to be stuck with a big box of shirts that I have nothing to do with. So I'd really, really appreciate it if you copped one. In case you haven't seen it, I put together a short street promo edit of me and Slug showing off the shirts, doing some skating. It's a really fun one. I really like this edit. It came together well. I'll link that in the corner. If you wanted to buy a shirt, the link will be in the description down below, as well as in a tagged comment. And in the corner, I'd do it there as well, why not? <laughs> and yeah, I'd really appreciate it. But anyway, enough self-promotion. Let's move on to my favorite part of the show because I get to talk about your guys' cool shit, and that is media. Just another reminder that the only way to get your stuff onto this part of the show is to post it on the Blader News subreddit. The top voted posts end up on the show. The link to that will be in the description down below as well. Don't worry if you've never used Reddit before. I'm still a noob and I've been on there for a few years now. Everyone's welcome. You can't make a mistake. Starting off with the most upvoted posts of all time right now, we have Shelly on the Domestic Punks. If you've seen anything from Shelly, you know this is going to be a really cool little montage. I really like how many Christ grind she does. I feel like not many other people do that. And they're a sick grind. I highly recommend checking out the full thing. It'll be linked in the description. This is the best way to post Instagram stuff on the subreddit. Download it, post it directly to Reddit, and comment the original link below. Speaking of the domestic punks, we got this really cool animation of Bobby Spazoff doing his front side 720 out from the domestic punks edit. This is 105 frames hand drawn by Chris. You should definitely go follow him on Instagram because I'm pretty sure he's working on more stuff like this. I think he just posted one of Alex Brosco. Sean Collett's back in Blade News again for some more steezy skating, this time in a little montage called Trumpington Tings. <laughs> Why is it hard to say? Once again, all his tricks are just dialed in and they look really nice and good. It doesn't matter if it's a 360 sole or just a top sole, he makes it look so good. I definitely recommend watching this montage as well. And while we're still on Instagram, there's no way I can't talk about the fact that Nick Lomax did this disaster hurricane top sole on the sharpest looking crazy street ledge I've ever seen. If you haven't been following Nick Lomax on Instagram, you're really missing out right now because he's been posting so much fire clips, it's just ridiculous. USD owes him a bonus. And man, I have dreams about landing hurricane topsoles. The closest I've ever got was a 270 front torque to topsole that it did probably 10 years ago. I should probably work on that because it would be cool to actually land one of those. Anyway. <laughs> and then we got a rollerblading film from Robbie Pitts called Full Spiral. And the only way to describe this video is to call it a piece of art. It's just full of some really good skating and it's Robbie Pitts, so you already know it's some really creative skating. 
I watched this thing and I came away so inspired. I highly recommend checking it out. Don't miss out. Go watch this one. And then we got the Starly Night Edit of my boy Gib over at his home skate park the day before it gets closed for renovations. This montage is filmed so well. I really love how it's cropped in on his feet doing all these styly switch ups and tricks. It's a really good piece. It's Gib. He is so good at skating. He makes everything look cool. I definitely recommend watching this one. We also got this sick edit from Young Gun Andy. Pretty much every clip in this is a line, which like blows my mind that he's thinking like that and skating at this age. I remember when I was his age, all I ever thought about doing was just single tricks. I hardly ever did lines. It's like I didn't even know they existed. This edit really impressed me. You should definitely watch it. And finally, we got Michael's introduction edit to USD. Now, when I saw this video on my YouTube feed and I saw the thumbnail, is him jumping through a hole in the wall. There's no way I wasn't going to click on that. And it's not very often that the thumbnail for a video is the first thing you see. And that's what happens with this. The first clip you see is a 540 through a hole in the wall, which is absolutely insane. But that's not the best part of this edit. It really keeps you hooked with the high level of skating this the whole way through it. Michael really proved that he deserved this spot on the USD team. You should definitely watch this edit. It is a really good one. Check it out. Links to absolutely everything I talked about today will be in the description down below. Make sure you check out the original posts because they deserve the views more than me. If you wanted to support me and this show, consider buying one of my new lace shirts. I'll ship it out to you as soon as I can and I'd really appreciate it. Or you can just subscribe. That helps just as much. I want to give a huge thank you to my Blade News correspondents, James, Matt, Sweet Moves and Sonic Sports, as well as the rest of my patrons and members. I couldn't do this without them. They're absolutely amazing. And we're going to end this episode with a clip of a 33-year-old guy getting back into street skating, looking like he never left. Peace out. Yeah, she's... Oh, you fucked a bit. <laughs> buckle your buckle, bro.